Ready. All right. We'll now call the City Council special meeting to order for October the 3rd, 2019 at 6 p.m. Please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. The invocation be given by Councilwoman Brenda Gray. Let's bow our heads, please. Oh, the Father in heaven, oh, the Father in heaven, we thank you for allowing us to be here this evening. We thank you for blessing everyone that's here. Bless the ones that wanted to be here but could not be here, Father. We ask you to bless our city, bless our state, and bless our country. We pray for each and everybody, dear Father. Let us make good decisions concerning our city of Avon Park. Father, we may not agree, but let us be cautious toward each other. Father God, we thank you so much for taking care of the city of Avon Park, taking care of all of our leaders. We ask this and every blessing in thy namesakes. Amen. 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 I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. Amen. Madam Clerk, if you'll please call the roll. Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Spurlock. Here. Councilmember Sutherland. Here. Deputy Mayor Bernard. Here. Mayor Anderson. Here. We have a quorum. All right. <clears throat> First up, we have item number four. We have ratification of the aviation fuel purchase. This was Ms. Danielle Phillips. Do you want to? Explain or are we all good with it? Um, Anyone have any questions I'll, I'll, for? I'll, yeah. Um, basically, the purpose of this is I need approval from council since I do not have an active interim manager, uh, city manager, to approve the purchase. The purchase is um, $27,000, 465 Okay. Um, so it's definitely beyond my ability to purchase. Um, I am having the tank cleaned tomorrow. Um, and after the cleaning, the fuel truck is going to deliver. So I need approval from you okaying this delivery for tomorrow. If you don't, the fuel doesn't come. Right. And this will affect the whole weekend of sales. Right. <laughs> Do we have any questions for Danielle on this? And this is for the beginning of this fiscal year budget, correct? Yes, this will come out of this year's budget. You've already approved the budget of 65000 for the year. Um, so I just need approval since I don't have a manager to do it. Well, I make a motion that we approve the $27,465 so that Danielle can order her aviation gas. <laughs> I'll second. second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Council Member Gray? Yes. Council Member Spurlock? Yes. Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion unanimous. Okay. Item number five, we have discussion regarding interim city manager. We have a couple of uh, new developments in this. Um, I'm sure we've all heard. Mr. Schrader, would you like to say anything or only if you have questions? No, I think so. Okay. Be our guest. Please state your name and address when you get up here, please. I don't know that you're supposed to state your address, can you? Because you're retired or... If, um, you can? Okay. We'll find it. The major <laughs> Mark Schrader, 2215 North Bennett Road, Avon Park, Florida. Okay. Mark, do you want to start out with the <laughs> change of mind, or you just want to have us ask you questions? Or? No, it, actually, um, because I wanted to get down everything and not ramble on, I made some notes. If I okay. Go off that because Please. I had spoken to the mayor yesterday, and then I called, um, I, I, I told the mayor sometimes I call him um, commissioners because I'm used to going in front of the board, but council member Sutherland and council member Gray, because they had reached out to me, so I, I owed it to them to talk to them before I was here tonight. But um, I, I got to go back for one of the stars just to give you a sense of how I got to where I am right now. Um, back on... Um, September 24th, which was a Saturday, I received, um, well, actually a text message from one of my uh, friends, um, Booker Johnson, actually, and said that um, Council Member Gray um, wanted to know if I could give her a call. And um, I was, um, before I could do that, I actually got a call from um, Council Member Sutherland to tell me that the, the night before, I guess it was on the 23rd, that 
um, David Flowers had resigned, and she wanted to know if she could bring my name up. Pretty much extend it, and I'm like, I think my answer was, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then um, when I got a hold of uh, Council Member Gray, who had called me back because she would get hair done, couldn't answer the phone, um, she, not knowing the other council member called me, obviously, um, she told me that David had resigned and asked if um, she could bring my name up and on an interim basis, and that was it. And that's about the extent of it, and I told both of them about the same thing. Yeah, I mean, go, go ahead. So then on, um, I think it was the Tuesday, because your, um, your meetings take a while to come out with the new ADA, we were just talking about that. So it was on Tuesday, I pulled up the 23rd meeting online, and I watched what really went on here that night. I watched a lot about your budget, and Ricky did a really good job, by the way. And um, then I watched the end of you know what happened. So, And um, I, then on Monday, this past Monday, I received a text from um, Council Member Gray saying that there was a motion passed and that I was going to be afforded the job as the interim city manager. And then that was followed by a telephone call from her telling me that um, Kim, the city clerk, um, would be calling me. And she called me maybe quarter of nine or so and asked if I'd come in and meet with HR Director Brenda. And I said, sure, about 10.30. So I went in and I met with uh, Brenda. And actually, when I got in there, I heard somebody say, Mark, come on in. It was David Flowers, who I've known for the 25 years I've been here. and worked a few things with him in his capacity at the county and mine with the sheriff's office over at the courthouse. And I had a very nice talk with David. He was cleaning out his desk. He had a very, just a very nice sit-down talk, and he brought me up to speed on your, on your big project that um, you've got a due date on, that the shovel's not moving it. You're looking too many. I mean, he, he uh, on that, and, and um, I asked him where you're tying in and all that, and he showed me the map. So very nice. Gave me his card, his number, call for anything I needed. So I just want to pass on that it was very nice with David and with him. I sat down with your. Um, with Brenda, the HR director, and I brought up that, you know, we probably need a background before I can even start. And she said, yes, you do, and because it's in a Florida statute that you have to do backgrounds, because who knows what I've done since two and a half years ago I left Sheriff <laughs> up, which is nothing, but you, 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 it needs to be done. So she called the mayor, and, and he got a hold of, of your uh, city attorney, and he said, yeah, we'll get together while they're doing it and, and do a waiver or at least you get to vote on that, on a waiver. So she sent me down to do my drug test and that. When I got done with that, I grabbed lunch. I came back and said, I better stop in and meet Ronnie, um, your director there, because he's got these big things going on. And all I got to say is, man, that guy's jammed up. Uh, I'm, uh, Cat McGann is usually in here. He told me how sharp that guy is. And if you all had been down there in his office and saw his whiteboard that's about 10 foot by 5 foot, that guy's the best printer I ever saw. I mean, that guy said he'd be my scribe if I got a full-time <laughs> job. Because, um, jam up your HR directors. Was, I know quite a bit about HR because I oversaw a five and a half year sheriff's office, and she's working on some things, and she knows risk management. I was impressed. Again, first impressions, I'll tell anybody. And your city clerk was very nice to me and very knowledgeable, so I, I want to pass that on when, when I meet somebody like that. So anyways, that was my first impression talking to them. And so the next day I realized that after meeting your directors, I thought, wow, because I can tell you, did I have it in my mind to put into a full-time job? Probably 30% yes, 7% no, because the last time I put in, and, and it, this is no fault in, but that's the way things are. But I put in, and I had a half dozen people come to me and say, David's already got the job. You're wasting your time. You're very qualified. And I don't care. I don't take this stuff personal. You chose David. And again, I'm just saying why I probably wasn't going to put in. But then when I met your directors, and I thought, and I just three of them, and I thought, man, I, this is a place I could work and help them because they know so much and run between, you know, the, the, the council and them. And I was just so impressed that I said, you know, I would probably, if, if their prerequisites are near the same that I qualify, I would put into this job because I think that I could help make a good team here. So I had to ask myself, should I be the interim then? Is that really fair? Because I have to tell you some personal things that I've experienced over the past two and a half years putting in for police chief jobs. I found out that when I find out there's an interim in, I don't even put in anymore because it's a, it's a uh, 
charade what they play. They advertise all over the United States. In fact, Channel 10 called me one day and said, hey, did you, um, it was through one of, one of my references, they found me, actually it was June. And they said, did you put in over in the city, over on the coast? Yes, did you ever hear anything? No, and they said, you were Chief Debbie, Master's for your FBI and NASCAM. They said, you and three chiefs out of Texas, and somebody else with all the experience, nobody even got called in and they gave it to their interim. And the union ratted on that they didn't bring any of us in. And so I've run into that and a lot of guys of my rank that are retired looking for jobs out there, they've run into the same thing. When there's an interim that's able to put in for the job, it's almost senseless to put in because a lot of times it's writing on the wall. So I know that is a um, personal thing. So I have to ask myself, should I put in for the interim job? Well then, um, when that video of, was put online that I was able to watch of when you decided the prerequisites and when you were going to hire, which someone already told me it's already on in, in deeds, so somebody did a good job, got it out. Um, and, and I watched it, the mayor brought up a question, which I, I talked to him, and I told him it's probably a question I would ask too. He asked, Miss Gray, is, is Mark, Mr. Trader, going to put in for the full time job? And she said, I don't know. And he came back with, probably would I have come back with, yeah, I'm sure you don't know. But she didn't because she told me that, no, and, and, and I already told the mayor, you told the truth. And if, if I'd have told you different, I would tell him. I mean, honesty is something I always try to go by. So, <laughs> There was no talk of full-time job or whatever like that. So after watching that and, and already feeling that, I had to follow my morals and ethical conviction, my integrity, and, and I had to do the right thing. So I called the mayor and I asked him to sit down. If he had five or ten minutes just out of the blue, and he said, sure, come on by. We probably talked for 30 minutes or more because we talked outside of this, this job. And, you know, and I asked for his opinion, and he said, you know, really, if you're going to put in for it, it probably isn't a good idea, in his opinion, because I asked for it, and I was at lunch with three of my buddies, I asked them the same thing, they said, hey, that, that's for you to make. So I, I made it with my heart, is what I did, because I know I could be the interim and make some money, but you know what, that's not what it's, what it's about. Um, so I've given you the examples, but you know, in the end it with, I've lived, I've lived a five minute drive from the city limits for over 25 years now. I live in Avon Park Place, get my car five minutes, I'm in the city limits. 10 minutes, I'm, I'm down here. I want Avon Park to be the best it can be where the city employees are treated with full respect and that the daily mission is not only to maintain but increase the quality of life for the citizens. And I, I, that's how I feel that that's what uh, everybody working here should do. And as I passed on to uh, Miss Sutherland, there's already belief that underhand stuff goes on in Avon Park politics. You all know that, people say it, and whether it's true or whether it's perception, I don't know, people's perception is reality anyway. I don't want to be associated with that. And if I, if I take this interim job, even though I know when I said, yeah, I come down, I'll do it, I really didn't have a big intention putting in for the job, the perception would have been there anyways, and it certainly would be there now because I wouldn't tell anybody I wouldn't put in for it now because most likely, as I told the mayor, probably went to a 70-30, went to 80-20 that I put in for it after especially meeting these directors. Um, so with that, um, just to add this, therefore I think it's best for all to be above board in this very important decision you have to make on, on hiring the city manager that you're going nationwide. You may get some really jam up people putting in for this job that have been a city manager that have a good background, I, you know, I don't know. But I do know that they know there's an interim in there that, that can put in for the job. They may be like me and other jobs and not put in. I, I don't want that for the city. Um, so that interim should be someone who's going to apply for the position to ensure a fair process for anybody that applies. So that's why I'm here tonight. And as I told the two commissioners I talked to when I first started out, I hope we're still on good terms. I don't want to upset anybody, but I have to do this out of my heart, out of my integrity, and if I didn't, I wouldn't be who I proclaim to be, so. We appreciate it very much, Mr. Schrader. And Bravo. Uh, thank you. We, thank we you. have thank any, you. any questions thank for him you. right here? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so that brings up a uh, different discussion. I had uh, supplied everybody with a resume from Mr. Uh, Tom Thanos, which is who I brought up last time. He's the city's um, special magistrate. However, uh, I got a text message uh, right before the meeting saying that he is no longer interested. <laughs> oh. 
Nobody wants to be an yeah. interim city manager. So <laughs> that I'll brings up job. that well, brings up a different question. Who uh, do we have any suggestions? Well, I have a suggestion. Um, I, I will say that I did call Kim this morning. Um, I looked at her job description. She's our current city clerk. And um, her job description says that she fits in, which we approved here at the last time when we approved job descriptions for directors. And she's supposed to sit in as a city manager when the city manager is absent. That right. assumes, of course, if he's sick or if he's on vacation. Right. But because this is a short period of time and because she has no desire to put in for city manager, I thought that if she were to do it then, and if she's willing, that um, she's already there. It would be a seamless transition for anyone coming into the position because she would be right there. There wouldn't have to be someone else telling them, you need to do this, you need to do that. So I am going to suggest that we put in our city clerk, Kim Gay. And um, if, if we do that, then she's ready to go from what our conversation with her. And she wants to make sure that she doesn't get fired while she's interim. And I told her that wouldn't be the case. <laughs> Um, she would go back to her old job once the city, you know, the real city manager comes in. Okay. So there seems to be a, a level of, of comfort with her there. At least I know other employees get along with her and she seems to be very, you know, non-political and that's my suggestion. I think she would do a fantastic job and I wholeheartedly uh, agree with you. And I do too, because on her job, the de the job description that was I intend to bring it with yeah, me, but you, I you read the same it. thing I did exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but what? I don't have a problem with that if she what? would take it. What is the other two? I'm 100%. on board 100. percent Me too, 100. percent Oh, good. Well, my goodness, that sounds unanimous. Oh, yes. Okay. So. And, and while we're on that subject, I just wanted to make one other comment because this kind of comes into play with that. I don't know what Kim's financial gift is in terms of running a financial department. However, I do know that when Ricky is not there, Danielle does probably 75% of running the um, finance department. And we are not going to have one until we hire a new city manager because I don't believe that Kim wants to hire anybody in the time being. So that being the case, I'm not asking for Danielle to be a co-manager. I'm just asking that Kim, give a consideration to Danielle to go ahead and run the run it rather than bringing in our two hundred and fifty dollar an hour accountant. Um, Are you talking about Wix Brown? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe it should be a consideration as um, maybe her being the interim finance director, so she can sign stuff and stuff till you get somebody. Because if this is going to be a a two to four month situation. It probably, I mean, we've lost two signers, and then, you know, if I'm a signer and she's a signer, we'll bring those two signers back Does temporarily. Does that create the mayor, don't you? Yeah, but they have and to have the mayor, yeah. yeah. They need staff signers as well yeah. as staff the elected signers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's my, my thought. Danielle, two staff um, signers? I would just ask you guys, does that create any hardships on you guys? And Well, first of all, are you willing to do that if, if we ask you to? If that's what I have to do, yes, I will okay. do it. Okay. Does that create any hardships with you guys as far as holding different positions and all that? I mean, is everything cool there? I have to pick it up anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to give me the title of director on an interim basis, I mean, that's just compensation for what I'm already doing. I got you. Yeah. I'm, I'm really good with it, too. Right. I think that um, Danielle and I, you know, we can bounce things off of each other and... Um, you know, Susie's phenomenal too, so I think that we'll have a good team and I can help Danielle, Susie can help her and me and Danielle can help me and she already is helping me, so I think it'd work out well. Great we certainly idea. appreciate your willingness. I think it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. But with that. Okay, and then the other thing also, because we <laughs> had started the pay rate for the city manager at 80,000, I'm going to request that as long as we have an interim city clerk that we pay her the $80,000 rate um, until we replace her with a city manager. That's my motion. So that's a motion. Mm -hmm. So that motion includes appointing her as interim city manager, mm -hmm. the pay rate, and? Of $80,000 per year. <coughs> okay. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second. So we have a motion and a second. Obviously, uh, as part of that, we are not having anything to do with the finance director. No, nope, that's, that's entirely up to our interim city manager. Okay. Any questions on that motion? Nope. Seeing none, we will call the roll. I lost the roll. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Gray. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should know it by heart. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. 
Council Member Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Item number six, we have the date of the Halloween trick-or-treat. Traditionally, <coughs> this was on the last Saturday of October at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. If there is no opposition to that, that's my recommendation as well. I agree 100%. I think we actually voted on that last year. I thought we kind of like made it semi-permanent. Yeah, that, that's one question I forgot to ask Jerry, if we can make it in perpetuity, just so that everybody knows every year this is the time. We don't have to do this every time because I think we've done this for three years in a row. You've done it every year I've been up here. Yeah. So <laughs> So what date are we looking at? The last it's Saturday the last of October? Saturday. The, 20, the 26th. I believe it's 26, yeah. yeah. It's my anniversary. Well, Can we go. maybe do a resolution to have this um, put into perpetuity for, you know, then you guys don't have to yeah. um, approve it every year. And I know we don't have a resolution tonight, but even if you set the dates tonight, the we next can, meeting or a couple meetings from now, we can have the attorney dra draft a resolution and do that. Is that I, good? I think that's what we need to do. Okay. I agree. Okay. So do we have a motion? Motion to approve the last Saturday of October as uh, the date for the Halloween trick or treat. Second. We, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? Who seconded, please? Councilman Bernard. If there's no questions, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Up next, we have item number seven, approval of DR 422 trim. This has to be approved by October 8th, 2019, so we need to get it done tonight. Yeah, Do we have any questions for staff on this? And this is the last thing we do, right? Uh, well, there's still a, a 420 mm that I'll have to do and a 487, which is the final one. But this one is needed now because this actually sets our millage. What's happened with that is I just need you to um, vote yes or no. Do you want to adjust your millage? You can actually adjust it down a couple of points, not, not you know, like it's 2.27 or something is how it wound up coming out. Mm -hmm. So they just want to know if you want to adjust it. So that's why we had to bring it to you tonight. So if you want to adjust it, we can adjust it down. Otherwise, we'll go with the proposed point three. Okay. I think going ahead with the proposed, proposed point yeah. three. Yeah. Is Otherwise, that would have been the rollback rate, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would suggest the same thing as well, that we stay with the... Be looking for a motion? Mm -hmm. Let me see what I'll make a motion. Like. We approve DR422 trim to be... Uh, same as last year. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions? Seeing none, we'll call the roll. Councilmember Gray? Yes. Councilmember Spurlock? Yes. Councilmember Sutherland? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bernard? Yes. Mayor Anderson? Yes. Motion, motion passed unanimous. Thank you. That concludes our agenda. Be looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seeing no opposition, we are adjourned. All right. It's got to set some kind of a record. That was my acid my brain. Oh, yeah. <laughs>